Now we can start the workshop. So welcome everyone to the first workshop on mobile photography with Miss Pearl E. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> okay. So welcome to this workshop. Yeah, welcome. Um, all right. So uh, Hyrule, do you want me to start right now or are you gonna? Yeah, do I will do the introduction slide. first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Uh, they say tak kenal maka tak cinta. So let me introduce myself. My name is Hyrule, uh, also known as Jebat. And I'll be your MC for today. With me today, I have Book Lucy and Miss Honey as your co-host that will be helping me throughout the webinar. So before we giving this floor to Miss Pearl, please let me allow me to introduce TRCRC. So as you may or may not heard about TRCRC, our vision is to conserve and preserve threatened tropical rainforestation uh, plant species and to support other organizations in converting and maintaining a stable forest ecosystem. We collect the seeds uh, of the detocrap tree and then we grow them in our nursery uh, for about two years and then before bringing them back to the planted in the forest restoration site. We work with the indigenous community from seed collection, nursery setup, seedling buyback uh, to tree planting program and also providing uh, training and volunteering opportunity for our youth. So in the conjunction of the International uh, Day of Forest on March 21st, 2022, TRCRC is organizing a series of three uh, uh, photography and journalism uh, workshop with a follow-up storytelling competition. Together, uh, this training session aims to provide exposure and training to highly interested individuals in rapid, accurate, and charismatic documentation for the forest. In, the, in this first workshop, we also like to launch the storytelling competitions. So you may submit your forest story from today until 10 March on the submission link. The submission link will be shared in the email upon workshop sign up and our Instagram bio. One lucky winner will be joining the team and yes, me to our project site at Banon Pera during the week of International Day of Forest uh, at the end of March. So during this time, the winner will have the chance to put their learn skill to test, documenting the conservation field work that will be taking place throughout the week. So today, we have an incredible speaker who will share her knowledge and experience on mobile photography. I'm very delighted to welcome Miss Pearl E from Sarawak. So a little bit introduction about our panels. Previously, she worked as a nurse in Australia. Now, a biology student. Her fascination with the natural world and photography has swayed Pearl to join and assist her husband, uh, a professional wildlife photographer, on trips and expedition into some of the worst wild and remote jungle around the world. Uh, bear in mind, she used only her mobile phone to capture nature and wildlife image. Without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to Miss Per. Hi, hi. Thanks so much for that wonderful introduction, Hyrule. Okay, so you basically covered what I was going to say in the very beginning in terms of where I come from and my background. So thanks so much. Now I am just going to share my screen. So bear with me for just a moment. Okay. Now, hi everyone. So just before I uh, proceed with my slides, uh, Hyrule, are you able to tell me if you can see that my slideshow is um, in maximum, uh, in full screen right now? Yeah, yes, I can see your slide. Okay. Perfect, okay, perfect. Okay, so, all right, so how, sorry guys. Okay, so 
today, what I'm going to share with you is um, through, you know, through uh, my experience in um, phone photography. So over the past six years or so, I've really learned how to explore the uh, camera potential on my phone and be able to you maximize the camera and capture to uh, capture images, uh, wildlife images such as this uh, as you see on my screen here. Um, and so today I would like to share with you quite informally um, the things that I've learned over the years and how it can help you uh, improve your phone photography as well. Now, there's one really famous saying that the best camera is the one that's with you. Like I cannot stress this enough because for many years I was using a really old phone, I was an iPhone 6S and I was able to still capture uh, good images. Um, and I have a lot of friends writing into me and asking me, oh my gosh, do you have the latest phone model? Is that how you, are able to obtain such crystal clear image. And I would always tell them, no, I'm still using the old phone. However, it really helps being able to understand the, uh, the uh, specific details of the you know, camera option, uh, camera functions that you have with the app to be able to capture these um, clear images. So, how did I get into phone photography? Well, about 10 years ago, when I started uh, venturing into nature, um, I was influenced by my par partner, now my husband, um, to pick up photography. As you know, oh, some of you might, might know him, his name is Shen, and he is an excellent wildlife photographer. And I have learned a lot of tricks, uh, tips and tricks from him on how to shoot wildlife. And all this while we were going on to trips, uh, expeditions and adventures, I was photographing with his spare cameras and I was sharing his lenses as well. So one day I thought, you know what? This is getting a little bit too much for me having to carry around a big camera. And as you see here, I'm usually lugging around some of his equipment because he has a lot being a wildlife photographer. Um, so one day I just thought, hey, I have this perfectly capable phone in my hand. Why not try to explore how I can maximize it? So that was how I began into this long, um, long lasting hobby of mine. So as you know, your phone, everybody has a phone these days. And it's always in your pocket. Why not just, you know, why not use it? When you go hiking, you always have your phone with you and it's an excellent tool to capture any sort of images you want. It's lightweight compared to a DSLR. It's certainly more affordable than owning a very big expensive camera. Um, it's very easy to set up. Um, and you can do all that, you know, from capturing to editing to processing all that on your little device. So first half of my um, workshop, um, I am going to uh, talk about some photography basics. Uh, I think it's very, I'm not going to go into so much detail, but I think it is fairly important to know a little bit um, of uh, the techniques for photography and the more you know technical side like the shutter speed and whatnot. So actually before I continue on to the next slide, um, I would like to do a poll um, asking you guys how many of you actually um, photograph with your phone and which brand do you use? Now I'm going, now it's up right now. So I'm gonna give you guys some time to answer these questions, just so I have an idea um, what the background, what, what you guys are shooting with currently. Wow, okay, okay. So I'm gonna give you perhaps another minute or so.
All right. I think everybody has submitted. All right. From what I can see here, most of you, 53% of people uh, in attendance use an Apple. And we have a tie between Samsung and Xiaomi. Some of you use Google. And I'm guessing opposite here actually means Oppo. <laughs> Must be a uh, uh, autocorrect here. And OK, quite a few of you own a digital, ca digital camera. All right, perfect. So. Okay, now I am. Having some technical issues. <laughs> Just keep bear with me for a second, guys. All right, here we go. Um, Just a quick note, uh, Hyrule Cal, can I get rid of the poll? So I, I just end the poll just now. Oh, you did. I'm still uh, seeing it here on my screen. You just, Sorry about the hiccup, guys. Can oh, you I see close it. it? Yeah. I got it. Thank All you. Right. I got it, got it, got it. All good. Okay. Okay, so let's go into the basics of photography. Now, the most important thing I find is that um, the focus. A lot of times when I'm photographing something, I think I have a good shot, but then when I review my images, I notice that the focus is slightly off and it's very unnerving to think that you have a shot but then the focus is completely off. So what do I mean by focus? Um, so you look here, I have a photo of a plant hopper. It is perfectly um, lit. However, if you can see the eye is actually soft and the plane of focus is actually on its leg. Now, despite having excellent light on it, I cannot, I am not able to use this image anywhere because the, the focus is not on its eye. And after finding this out, what I did was I corrected it by adjusting the focal plane. Now, sometimes you may notice that when you photograph uh, using the original camera, the native camera on your phone, when you try to tap on the screen for it to focus, it just would not focus on the spot that you want it to. Now, I, I notice this a lot because uh, I notice this a lot, especially when I try to photograph something in the dimly lit forest floor. Um, it's because the sensor is really small, the sensor on the camera is really small, and it's not able to pick up enough light for it to um, focus on the spot that you want it to. So there are ways to get around this, and one of them is by using a uh, downloading a camera app, which I will go into much more detail shortly. So there are certain ways, certain steps that you can do um, to make sure that your focus is um, ideal, which is in the right uh, is in the right spot. Now, your camera lens. Make sure it is clean. Oftentimes, I when I pull up my camera, uh, my phone from my pocket, my finger brushes on the the camera lens, and it leaves a really big smudge. And this can really affect the quality of the image because the lens is really tiny and a little smudge on the camera really shows up in your photo. Um, as I mentioned before, use a camera, camera app because usually these camera apps will allow you to um, have more controls over your image. I will explain a little bit more on this. I realize it's a bit difficult trying to explain this over <laughs> a, a virtual, I mean, over a webinar, but I'll try my best. And also with manual camera apps, you can turn on this option that allows focus peaking and burst mode, which I will go into in the next few slides. So here are a couple of screenshots of 
uh, camera apps that I have used and currently use. The one on the left, as you see that I circle, has a focus peaking option. And as you see, it's toggled on, which is um, showing in blue. And for burst mode right here on the right, it's also an option for you to toggle on and off. So what these two things does is, so focus peaking, it's an overlay on the display of your, um, your, your phone screen when you are about to take a photo. As you see in this picture here, the subject that I want to photograph is this little pin of a sloth. Um, as you can see, this green um, highlight indicates where the focal plane actually is. And as you see, it's actually behind my subject currently. And this is easily adjusted by adjusting, just slightly shifting the focal plane, um, the focus wheel. Um, so the image above says focus is at 0 0.23 and I adjusted it to zero. And now my subject is highlighted in green, meaning it is in focus. Now you can also change this by um, simply moving your phone forwards or backwards a little to uh, get your image in focus. However, when you are shooting um, things, critters that are really small, such as in macro photography, these, it really, really, really helps having a camera app that allows you these little minute adjustments on your focal plane. Um, otherwise, uh, um, you'd be wasting your time taking hundreds of shots and not getting a sharp image if your focus is not correct. And for burst mode, I find it really handy, especially photographing uh, objects, subjects that are really small, such as this little uh, pelican spider here. This spider is only like about one millimeter large. It's like a tiny little grain of rice and it was moving around. So it was really tricky being able to get, you know, most of its body and head in focus. So what I did was I turned on burst mode and how, the way you use burst mode is you make sure that the, first of all, you dial your focus, make sure your focus highlights are in the right spot. And then you hold down your shutter button. And usually that will capture several images in a short period of time. So this will increase your chances of getting an, an image that is sharp. So next I will go into a little bit of um, what shutter speed is and ISO and as well as light. I know some of this can seem a bit daunting um, to new, uh, for, you know, to beginners um, that are just starting into photography. I remember I used to feel a bit overwhelmed having to learn all these things, but um, so I'll just share you simple tips that I remember that can help me in achieving a great shot. So here are two images of the same subject, which is a leaf tail gecko, perfectly camouflaged on a piece of, um, looks like a liana, a woody vine. Now the image on the left was shot with natural light and handheld. And if you take a closer look, the eye of the gecko is actually slightly blurry and I, and this is so because it was handheld and that my shutter speed, which is indicated in that fraction at the bottom left, which is one over 30 seconds, which is a fairly slow shutter. And so what this does is because it's quite dim in the forest floor and I was hand holding it, I most likely shook, had a little motion shake, motion blur, and hence the image is slightly blurry. Whereas I corrected my mistake by taking the second shot on the right where I used supplementary light. And because I had added a little bit more light, um, this allows me to be able to, in, to short, to lower, I mean, to make the shutter speed a little bit faster, which is one over 120 seconds. And to reduce the ISO and was able to obtain this image. So what ISO, so now I'm gonna go into what ISO is so ISO is basically the sensitivity of the um, it, it's it's like a measurement of how much light 
will be picked up by a camera sensor. And in terms of, and for shutter speed, it's the length of time of which your camera stays open to allow light onto your sensor. So the key thing I want you to remember is if you're getting flustered knowing all these shutter speed, what shutter speed to use, always remember that 100, one over 120 seconds is a lot faster than a one over 30 seconds. So the slower the shutter, which is the one over 30 seconds, the more steady your hands need to be. Otherwise your image will come out blurry because of motion, um, because of some kind, some shake or motion blur. And this can be prevented by using a tripod. Now, slow shutter speeds are perfect when you photograph things that require longer exposures, meaning uh, leaving the camera shutter open for much longer time to allow more light to come in, such as this glowing mushroom shot that I uh, took a few years ago in uh, right here in Starbucks. And because the shutter is open for one second, I had to use a tripod to be able to stabilize the phone. And if you are a waterfall chaser and you love taking photos of waterfalls, um, slow shutter speeds will work perf uh, will work really well in um, obtaining this smooth flowing water as seen in this image here. Also, you will need a tripod to be able to obtain this image um, because you any little amount of shake will cause the whole photo to be blurry. Now, getting enough light can be tricky. Um, especially when you are photographing in the rainforest. Now, this can be uh, this can be uh, solved by using additional lighting, such as an LED video light um, or external flash. There are some companies out there that make uh, flashes that can be triggered by Bluetooth from your phone. Now, I personally have tried one and it did not seem to work really well with my phone. So um, you guys should, if you are interested, by all means, go ahead and look it up. I think uh, the particular model I, I used was not very good. So I end up give, giving up on that and I stuck to using just LED video lights instead. And uh, tripod is very important, especially when you want to photograph waterfall shots or or landscape shots that uh, are that require you to have longer exposures and to be very still. And um, when when you photograph in the rainforest, oftentimes the light is kind of dim, as you may notice, just because the light doesn't penetrate the dense canopy very well. And on a forest floor, for example, like this um, pit viper that I photographed in. Um, Ecuador. It was really dark. However, I was able to obtain this image by using, by mounting my phone on a tripod and I used a supplementary light. So then the third thing you need, I want to share with you um, is composition. It basically, how, how can you frame your image to, to um, be able to, how can you frame an image the way that it will attract the viewer's eyes more easily? Now, when we talk about composition, some of you may have heard things like the rule of thirds, um, golden triangles, the golden ratio and whatnot. What these are basically little guides that you can have when you are, um, setting up your shot. Now, I tend to like to display the grid on my phone. And what it tells me basically is um, where the ideal placement of my subject should be. Now, this is the rule of thirds here, as you see this, um, well, this uh, blue-eyed dragon. The rule of thirds is where this image is divided into nine squares and the point of interest which is, it can be um, the subject's eye or whatever you want the viewer to look at. Um, they should be in any of these four red dots. For some, 
for somehow some reason, the brain automatically focuses onto these dots in an image. Now there are other um, compositions that I've mentioned earlier. One of them is the golden triangle shown by an example here. I don't use this very often. My go-to my go -to composition is the rule of thirds or the golden ratio as seen um, in this image at the bottom right here of this frog. So how do you do this? Now you can turn on, if you go to your phones right now, if you can go to this, go to the settings and it's, it will say grid and it's usually a toggle button that goes on or off. So I'll give you an example right here of my camera app and it says grid when you can turn it on. And oops, and the other one on the right here as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go into some of my photography personal tips, I suppose. Um, I never uh, zoom by pinching, um, I never zoom my, uh, my camera by you know pinching because when you do this, it's actually a digital zoom rather than a proper zoom. And what this does is um, it, it causes a lot of pixels to be lost. And you end up with an image that is a lot less quality than what you can get. Now, so you can, most cameras have a two times zoom or a three times zoom on the native camera. And that's okay to use, but never go beyond that. And if you have to get closer to your subject, and if you, if, if you find that a lot of your subjects that you're photographing require a lot more zoom, maybe you can consider getting a mobile lens. The next thing to be aware of is weather conditions. Lighting is very important in getting a good photo. Um, so certain weather conditions you need to be aware of, such as bright sunny day. Um, I, it's not an ideal condition to be photographing at. You want, for a good photo, especially for landscapes, you want um, it to be overcast or cloudy, or you want soft light, such as during um, morning sunrise and sunset. So I have, photograph this image here of Joshua trees in Mojave Desert. This was photographed in bright daylight. And as you can see the image, yes, it's sharp and crisp, but it's also very blown out and it has very harsh shadows just below the trees. And there's, there's not much layers or depth to the image. And you compare this when I photographed it the following morning, at seven o'clock where the light is much more soft and it gives the, the same subject, uh, which is Joshua tree, a lot more um, feel and it looks much more interesting than the photo on the left. So here's another example of photographing when it's sunny. So I got this image of this waterfall um, with with slow shutter, although the water is perfectly um, exposed, but you can the overall feel of the image is very distracting, as you can see a lot of sunspots peeking through the canopy. And compared to this image, which I shot when a cloud passed through, it's much more soft and more vibrant in terms of the color. So next thing is um, don't, when you're photographing the rainforest, or don't uh, rely on just your uh, phone flash. I would highly recommend using an external light, such as an LED panel. Play around with the direction of your light source as well. Um, so this image of this, Amazonian horned frog I photographed here was shot with uh, LED light. However, 
it was shot with the light coming from in front. So it gives, it's perfectly exposed. However, it doesn't have much of a, uh, an interesting look. Whereas compared to the image on the bottom right here, I've changed the angle of the light a little and it, it, it uh, makes the photo look a little bit more interesting. So don't be afraid to get creative with your lighting. This photo of this chameleon sleeping here, um, I had the light source right in front. And then I decided to get another view of the chameleon by going photographing it from the other side and having the light right above it. So it casts a little bit of a shadow and gives it a little bit more depth and uh, a little bit more feel into the photo. So a few more examples of how you can vary your light source. This photo was shot with an LED panel right in front of it. You can see clearly see it's in focus. Great shot, uh, great shot of the Katie did. However, when I decided to hold a torch behind it, just to get a more, more interesting um, perspective on it, we realized that it actually shines through the leaves and it gave a really, really um, different feel for the photo. So don't be afraid to experiment with different angles, especially when you're photographing um, subjects that do not move very much, such as this frog I have here. So the first photo on the left, I shot it right front on. And in the second photo, I decided to go for a more wider view of it to give, you, to give the viewer a perspective of its environment. And then for the third shot, I decided to get a little bit more creative by um, partially blocking my camera with a leaf in front of it. So then I would really urge you for those who are very, who, for those of you who are um, learning to photograph with your phone is to try out a camera app. I have a few that I would really, Highly recommend. Um, ProShot was one of the ones that I first used for many years when I got into phone photography. You can look it up. It's available on Apple Store and um, it on uh, Android phones as well. And there are a few that I have the chance to test out, such as Helide, um, Manual Camera, DSLR Camera. They all of these allow um, manual controls all the functions that I was talking, that I've mentioned earlier. And uh, my current favorite that I use is the Moment Pro camera. So when you get more into phone photography, you realize that you might wanna get some additional gear. I really, really recommend a lightweight tripod. It is a lifesaver for me. And next, also equally important is an LED video light and especially one with a diffuser. You need, why do you need a diffuser? Well, a diffuser will really help obtain that, uh, it reduces shine on your subject and it gives you a very soft light. The next thing you might wanna consider as you get more into it is a phone lens. And if you are a waterfall chaser, I really, rec I, and a landscape photographer, I highly getting polarizing filters. So there are many phone, com there are many companies that make phone lenses. Um, some, one of these are Sandmark, although I've never had the opportunity to try it out. Um, I've heard some really good reviews of those. And Case is one of them uh, as well. And Moment lenses, they're a bit higher end, but they produce really high quality lenses. So everybody, everybody can obtain a good photo um, if you know how to apply all the um, techniques that I just taught you. So this photo was shot using a tripod and a camera app and as well as a polarizing filter. So I'm gonna share with you some of my personal gear list. 
Um, I use a couple of LED video lights. Um, it is definitely um, an essential item that I always carry around. Um, it's fairly, it's really cheap. Uh, you can adjust the brightness setting and the temperature as well. And it's really perfect for close-up photography. And if you're into shooting waterfalls and landscapes, I really recommend getting a tripod and a polarizing filter. Um, this will greatly provide you with the uh, stability you need when photographing under low light conditions as well in the rainforest. And you might also want to get some lenses. I currently use uh, Moments lenses. Um, of course, these are optional. Most of the time I, I most of the time I don't use any lenses, um, but if you do need a recommendation, I highly, uh, I would really recommend the macro lens. It's a perfect lens for photographing tiny critters in the forest. Now I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite editing apps that I use. Um, first of all, you might need this um, if you are shooting in RAW. Now, I mostly shoot in RAW because just because it allows me more flexibility in terms of being able to um, adjust um, my photos, to process my photos. So when you shoot in RAW, it, the camera captures more data. And so if you have some really dark shadows or really bright highlights, when you shoot in RAW, you are able, most likely able to correct, um, to recover those in post-processing. And uh, these editing apps, they do not alter the originals. And after you've made your adjustments to the photo, it always exports a copy in JPEG. So it doesn't do anything to your original image. One of the ones that I always use is Snapseed. It's completely free. Um, it's available on all Android devices, if I'm not mistaken, and as well as Apple devices. Um, VSCO, I use it sometimes, however, not so much these days, but feel free to explore the options on these. And my current go-to right now is Adobe Lightroom. And I use, they have a paid version and the free version, and I use just the free version. Um, I like it because it allows me to add um, notes onto my image, such as the title or the caption. So, what, so that when I go back onto my photo, I am able to see, uh, to recall, you know, what what species of snake I photograph. Um, so all that information will be available on Lightroom on your phone. Now I have a workflow, um, so when I photograph some, when I take a photo, I would use my Moment app. And then after obtaining the photo, I would import it into either Snapseed or Lightroom. And I would make some adjustments if needed, such as the exposure or any highlights that need um, reducing. Um, and then I would um, adjust the sharpness. I would correct any color, any color balance if needed. And then I would export it as a JPEG and then it will be ready for social media. So I do the, all this from my phone currently, and it's very simple. And last, the last um, bit here that I would like to bring up is um, the code of ethics in nature photography. As in all photography, we have a responsibility to our subject, and that is to look after the welfare, uh, the well-being of our subjects. So. We have the responsibility to convey um, a truthful image of natural animal behavior, um, especially when you're photographing animals. Um, you need you you need to be able to you need the image to be sorry you need the image to be truthful and not staged. So avoid repositioning your subject or manipulating whatever you're photographing. Um, Look after the well-being of the animal. Make sure you are not photographing the sub the subject for too long that it, it is starting to show obvious signs of distress. So there are a lot of images 
recently in the past few years that have gone um, viral online, which are things like um, frogs dancing. And this is very disconcerting because a lot of people think that this is an, a representation of what nature or wildlife is, which, and, but, it, but it is not. So as you see here, this frog appears to be doing a tap, a tap dance. Um, I think we all know that frogs do not dance for one. Um, subject is most likely highly manipulated. And, and the second shot is a moth. It looks like it's drinking something out of the pit viper's mouth, which does not make any sense. So just be wary of what you see online these days. And a lot of these photographers are getting exposed now that there are a lot more awareness of um, unethical photography happening. So in this case, um, this photographer captured this image of a frog riding a tortoise um, or you know, a, a frog in daylight with a snail crawling over its head. We know, we know that most frogs are nocturnal and photographing them in the day and highly manipulating them is very stressful for the frog. Um, so, and that's it. I have come to the end of my talk. Um, thank you so much again to the team at TRCRC for this opportunity to share my passion for mobile photography. Um, and I hope that um, you guys have are able to take home something and to be able to take what you've learned and practice it in the field. Um, so, and I look forward to seeing your photos. If you do take some and you would like to uh, me to see them, please tag, tag me on Instagram or um, you can also email me. I will put my email address and my Instagram handle in the chat box later so that if you have any further questions and you need clarification, just um, contact me. So thanks again very much for being here today um, and to listen to me talk about my hobby. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Pearl E. So now we actually uh, end quite early, 10 minutes. So we have extra time for Q&A. So please participant, please go to the Q&A chat box. You may respond via voice or chat. However, please raise your hand before speaking and the host will allow you permission to speak and enter your question or upvote question that you would like us to know. So let me see, we have 10 questions in the Q&A box. So we go first with uh, Mark Lewis. Paul, can you share what are your current phone photography setup? And do you use additional add-on lenses as well for macro or wide angle, etc. or the existing inbuilt camera is already sufficient? Yes, okay. Okay, so my current photography setup. Yes, I will share it with you, but I have to grab my lenses. Um, yeah, show it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just give me one second to grab them. Hold on a minute, okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we will wait for the lens. Okay, so my current setup that I use, I am using um, Moments lenses. I think I saw a comment earlier that someone saying that Moment lenses are very expensive. Yes, I agree they're very expensive, but they are the number one uh, in the market at the moment. Um, and if you do have a little bit of money to spend, I would recommend getting the uh, macro lens. However, there are other options, clip-on lenses as well. If you're just beginning um, phone photography, I would suggest by all means, try it out. Get one of the lower, um, more affordable, go with what you can afford for now. Practice 
And then when you are comfortable, you're confident that you are really, uh, you are able to use your lens uh, to its maximum potential, then I would recommend investing in better lenses. So Mark, um, I am currently using, okay, let me show you these. These are little moment lenses that they have a screw on bit here. That, so you have to buy a phone case and you screw it onto your phone case. Um, they're pretty sturdy. They're heavily, they're very well built. And I almost always use my macro lens, which is this one right here. Um, what was your next question? Do you use additional lenses? I think I've answered most of your questions. So I have three lenses. I have the telephoto, the wide angle, and the macro. Yeah, I think that's answer the questions to Mark. So the second question we know from Sarika. So when capturing like bark and insect, we have to take it from distance since going to near will shoo them away. So since additional lens for mo mobile photography is required, do you mind giving some tips on this? So how to not shoo the animals? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, I have that same problem too most of the time. So Bugs and insects, it helps if you approach them really slowly. Uh, most of the time they fly away from me as well. <laughs> um, having a telephoto lens, however, can help you get a little bit, uh, you know, can extend your distance uh, with your camera lens and be able to photograph the insect. However, it depends on the size of the insect. If it's very tiny, I think, um, you most likely will need a macro lens. And I, my general advice is be patient, uh, go slowly, approach it really slowly. And uh, if it flies, watch where it goes and you follow it and try to reload, try to locate it again and try again. Uh, I think that's the best, try to find again. <laughs> All right, the next question is, uh, how do you manage a bug photo? Uh, same as, do you use cloud service or hard drive for backup? Okay, bulk photos and iCloud. Yes, I have a lot of photos. Um, I use iCloud, I subscribe to iCloud, and I also have uh, my husband, and uses Dropbox, so sometimes I use that, but my main backup is on iCloud. And I also have a couple of external drives that I would uh, uh, back my phone, uh, phone I mean, my camera photos onto. Um, in terms of bulk photos, it's a bit tricky. You'll get a lot of shots, especially when you turn on your burst mode. Um, oftentimes I get the same 20 photos of the same subject and I have to go through every single one. Uh, to find out which one is sharp. And I discard the ones that are, are completely unusable. For example, if it's really out of focus, I just discard those. Um, yes, you. so you spend about, I'd say 10 minutes photographing, but you spend about an hour going through your photos. Uh, I think that's what every photographer has to deal with, uh, regardless of whether or not you use phone or if you use a, a DSLR camera. So. Hope that answers your question. Okay, should I proceed with the next question? Oh, Hyrule, I think you're mute. Were you saying something? Okay, okay sorry. How can you, how can we protect our device better in the forest for the humidity and low temperature? How can we protect? Um, I carry a dry bag. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you have I, special I, case? Mm, no, it's not a waterproof case. The case that I use um, fits my moment lenses and it's not a waterproof case. So I always carry a dry bag or a, Ziploc bag with me or several Ziploc bags. And I make sure that I don't use my phone when it's raining too heavily. Um, 
high humidity phone is pretty well sealed if you're worried i would recommend getting um those um rechargeable silica gels the ones mm -hmm. that you can refresh by plugging them into the power ports and it will uh store you can store your cameras in those and when i when i'm at home um as you know we live in Sarawak. it's in, in malaysia it's very humid i store my lenses in my um, dry cabinet just to prevent mold or fungus from growing on them yeah yeah you will need, try to avoid the mold mm -hmm. <laughs> all right uh, for the next question i think the same how you manage thousands of photo categorizing catering and storage <laughs> I think you do have yes, any... I, um, I think I answered mm -hmm. that earlier. Um, uh, in terms of categorizing and selecting mm -hmm. them, um, I use Lightroom. I have Lightroom Mobile on my phone. I use the free version. And I also do have a standalone version of Lightroom on my computer. That is my, that's my main um, cataloging and um, uh, software that I use to sort out my photos. So again, from Mark, so which photo taking apps will you recommend it to use? Any good free one for starter? Free ones. Mm. Um, that would be a bit tricky. I don't know what is available on the market right now. Um, just because I haven't looked uh, for a new one recently. But if I would, if you need me to recommend one, um, I say moment is a very good one to use. And if it's a bit above your price range, the next one you can go for is um, Pro Shot. That's P-R-O-S-H-O-T. I'm gonna type it here just so you can um, see it. Okay. And yeah okay so uh, any tips in capturing forest flare or black light condition capturing forest flare any tips oh the right right timing <laughs> 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 these things I, I know what you mean these things are very fleeting and sometimes when you see it with your eye and by the mm -hmm. time you set up your tripod you get your you get your app out and ready it's gone <laughs> um you have to be fast i would say and also knowing what uh what kind of uh settings such as the exposure time um uh the shutter speed to use really helps so i would say um familiarize yourself with the what whichever app you're using um practice uh and soon enough you will be able to capture for a flare <laughs> yeah so I think the next question uh, regarding the active. So we often see a lot of smiling animal video on Facebook. How do we identify those uh, articles and how we can act better to address the issue? Because many people think that they are cute by displaying human-like behavior. Right. Yes. So a lot of smiling animals and vi uh, videos on Facebook. I think... <clears throat> I would have to see an example, but I, certain animals look like they are smiling, not because they were forced, just because of the angle of the image was photographed. However, I know what you mean. Um, some photographers uh, heavily stage their their subjects to make it look like they're playing the guitar or riding a rodeo. Um, you can address this by, if, if they're being shared on very big platforms, um, you could always write into these platforms that are that are promoting these unethical photos, uh, explaining that this is not this is not regular behavior of an animal. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize this. Um, a lot of people are disconnected from what nature is supposed to be. Uh, it's really challenging. So the thing is, do not get angry. <laughs> it's very easy to get upset when you see these things. Um, try to uh just uh write to them or express your views your concern for this in a uh uh what do you call it a, a rational way uh, don't get angry about it um the more people are aware 
of it, the better. Yeah, I think if you saw some video on Facebook that very unethical, just that every report blog. Yeah, there's so many these days. Um, mm -hmm. It's very hard not to get upset. Uh, okay, for the next questions, do you have any tip for us that can't afford the gadget? Mm. So for many years, I was photographing without any lenses. At one point, I actually also bought a uh, clip-on uh, wide-angle lens. It didn't work very well, but I that was what I started with. Z um, so if you can't afford expensive gadget and you still want to take photos, I would recommend that one thing, one thing that I highly recommend getting is a, an LED light. They're not expensive. You can buy it on Shopee if you're from Malaysia. Um, it only costs about 70 ringgit. Um, and it will make the uh, difference, a huge difference in your images having the extra light. Oh, um, just let me quickly show you what I am talking about. LED, uh, LED light panels is this little nifty gadget that I have here. So I bought this on Shopee. Um, it only costed me 75 ringgit. A bit pricey, but it's still a lot cheaper than uh, springing for a much more expensive hardware. And I think the camera is not picking up the light very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one item that you can, uh, I would highly recommend is getting an LED light. It's a game changer. I really recommend it. <laughs> okay, next question from Zilan Lee. How do you mount your phone to Siri tripod? Uh, uh -huh. So I have a phone clamp that I mount to the tripod and I am going to show it to you right now. <laughs> okay, another video tutorial. <laughs> yeah, so the, the mount that I have is called Sunway Photo and it's this little thing here. And it's really good because if you, if you upgrade your phone, you will still be able to use it because it's adjust, completely adjustable. If you get a larger phone, you can turn a dial and it will fit a larger phone. So it's very versatile. I would highly recommend getting this. Okay. Uh, in your opinion, what is the biggest difference between Android and iOS camera? Um, you know, Androids and Apple cameras, they are basic, I would say they're neck to neck. Um, mm -hmm. There's, it's hard to say. I mean, all these phone brands are very competitive these days and you can get fantastic shots with whatever phone you use. Um, that being said, um, most of the time you notice that if you just use the regular camera app that, that is available on the phone, instead of using a, a, a camera, uh, Nate, uh, manual camera app is that sometimes certain phones tend to apply a filter mm -hmm. on your photo. So it appears, sometimes appears too saturated, uh, uh, too warm, or it, I would avoid, that can be avoided by using a third party camera app such as um, Moment or ProShot. Yeah, I think, think that's why I, I try try out camera apps um find one that works best for you because the hardware wise i think they're quite compatible i mean comparable between the android and the ios camera mm -hmm. okay so uh, next is interesting question maybe nalisa is interested in aquatic plant so she wondered if you could share some tips on when photographing aquatic plant especially mm -hmm. Tricularia. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you're photographing your tricularias, meaning you're trying to get the the bladders in the water, or are you photographing the leaf which is above the water or on the flowers? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say because most of our, as far as I'm familiar with, oh, you're photographing the bladders. Okay, well that's tricky. Mm -hmm. Um. I would not submerge my phone in the water. <laughs> um, you can get these 
dry uh, waterproof bags that you can put your phone in to take photos underwater. Um, so if you're just if you're just dipping the camera part of the phone, I suppose it's fairly safe. Um, but I do I don't do a lot of underwater photography, and I'm very scared to do so because I've ruined several phones by accidentally dropping them oh. into the stream when I was photographing a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, most phones are fairly water resistant these days. Um, you, you could look into getting a, water, a waterproof case or um, a waterproof bag. Uh, that would be my advice, I, I think. Yeah, I hope Melissa can get a good photo for that. So next is Ajax, just a curiosity. Did you ever try using GoPro to capture nature photography? Mm. I do not own a GoPro, unfortunately. <laughs> but it, it would be something that I would be interested in. <laughs> so when I do do that, um, if, you follow, if you are following me on Instagram, I guess you'll, you'll, uh, you'll see it. <laughs> okay, uh, so phone photography has to be very close to the subject. So how you deal, can we see a picture of snakes? So how you deal with the dangerous subject, that potential harm? Now, what do you mean by dangerous? As in like a, a photographing a venomous snake, oh, yeah, I, think I assume? Venomous snake, I think, yeah. Okay. First of all, um, just be very aware of the snake. If it's in striking position, don't be anywhere close to it. Um, I usually use my telephoto lens just so it gives me a bit more, it puts me at a safer distance between the subject and me. Um, yeah. Just be aware, like be very alert. Be aware of where your hands are. Make sure your hand is not anywhere in, within striking range. That will be my advice. Uh, so the next question, maybe you need to make a tutorial video, I think. So how do you edit the photo? Uh, example, brightness, sharpness, and etc. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is a whole other... Um, workshop that would be better <laughs> to do in person I would say <laughs> a hands-on workshop um, I, how do I edit photos brightness sharpness etc um, I use snapseed for my editing and uh, you will you always want to try to adjust the brightness or exposure uh, according to what you see according to what it represents uh, as when you took the photo. Um, as for sharpness, um, I depending on how, how grainy your image is, because the more you sharpen, the more grain it has and depends on what settings you use to shoot it. Um, if you sharpen it too much, your image will end up looking very grainy instead of sharp. Um, again, I think, a hands-on tutorial would be much better yeah. to answer these uh, to help you answer these questions. So perhaps maybe in the future, yeah, um, maybe. CRC RC <laughs> does another workshop um, yeah. after the pandemic. I would be happy to do so. Yeah, we we'll do like no online. We come here and we we'll do face-to-face -face video editing special from <laughs> Okay. Uh, so how do you deal with the problem like limitation of focal point while using macro lens? Okay, um, limitation of focal point while using echo lens. Certain, certain objects, certain subjects are too big. I've come across where the subject is too big for my macro lens and too small for no lens. So you just have to find the sweet spot uh, for these subjects. So limitations of focal point while using macro lens. Um, it helps if you have a manual focus, which comes with your um, um, downloaded camera app where you can adjust. Uh, that really helps with adjusting the focal plane. Okay, so like does the manual camera work differently than the pro mode in the build 
built in camera apps like it offer more functional because I use the pro mode now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um so I think pro mode basically does pretty much the same stuff as the narrow app. I have to see it depending on your phone model. Um if your phone model allows you in the pro mode allows you to shoot in raw that's fantastic and or to shoot in burst mode um to have all those uh focal uh um focus peaking then that's fantastic it sounds if you have all those it sounds like you do not need to uh buy a camera app and you could just stick to the pro mode on your on your phone Okay, the next, which photography parameter should we adjusting first when taking manual with phone apps? ISO, aperture, shutter speed, because sometimes the photo get chalky, especially in low light forest environment. So one thing about adjusting uh, the settings on the phone app. So you can adjust ISO and shutter speed and exposure compensation in some apps. However, you can never change the aperture. Why? It's because the aperture on the camera of your phone is fixed. It's not like a DSLR where you can actually uh, change the diameter of your aperture. So on the phone, it's fixed. So that, that's a, an element that you cannot change. Now you can adjust the ISO. So in low light conditions, usually you want a higher ISO. However, because the phone sensor is so small that when you bump up your ISO, you notice that if you go sort of above 100 ISO, you start to notice a lot of grain on your photo and that's not ideal. So what you, you can counter this by um, uh, increasing the, or slowing down the shutter, which is increasing the exposure time. So instead of saying photographing at one, uh, one over 120, you can lower it to say one over 80, but that will mean that you have to be super stable. Uh, you can brace your hand on the side of a tree trunk, or you could use a tripod and that will should be able to help you in terms of getting uh, your shot in low forest uh, light conditions. Uh, okay, we still have some more time for questions. I hope he still can have the momentum to answer it. Sure. <laughs> All right. I have can, time. We, yes. <laughs> can we use phone portrait mode as a macro photographer? Do they work similarly? Mm. Mm. I have not have I haven't had any good luck. I mean, good outcomes with that for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't quite seem to focus on the on my subject as well when I use uh, portrait mode. I don't think they work in a similar way because <laughs> the portrait mode, if I'm not mistaken, it combines two images into one and it gives the bokeh like a smooth background, whereas in macro, it only uses one camera lens. So oh. it's a uh, different. different. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, sometimes clear or bright skies tend to overexpose the whole picture. Do you have any tips on this? Yes, clear or bright skies, not ideal for photography. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're trying for a landscape shot, you, and it's really bright and sunny, I would recommend waiting for a cloud to come by. Um, or you could come back to that same location and photograph it in uh, uh, early morning for the sunrise, the dawn light, or sunset at dusk light. It's it's much more um, smooth. Um, you'll get a ver better exposure on your image. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you tried photographing birds? Yes, I have with my phone, but through my binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, I do not have a super long telephoto lens i sometimes i sometimes hold up my phone to my binoculars and i try to brace my hand on something and then i take yeah. the photo it helps using burst mode as well because eventually you'll get one that is sharp but then you have the pain of going through all the blurry images and deleting them and selecting the good one <laughs> okay 
may I know how do you capture your picture with black background? They look super clean and super cool. Ah, um, my black background images are because mostly I photograph at night. I when we go on night walks, I photograph critters at night. Also, um, uh, when you have a supplementary light, you can you can uh, really increase the uh, shutter speed, make it trigger really fast, and that that makes the background look a lot darker than it normally is. But most of my shots were shot at night, hence the black background. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for the yeah. So so that's the, the trick. Uh, compliment. <laughs> So yeah. I think I finished the question in Q&A. So I checked some of the chat box. Maybe we missed some. So sure. mostly from uh, Mr. Muhammad Rahmat. This tip can apply for all type and brand phone? Uh, hold on. Can you repeat that? I'm trying to find that, so that question. He, he asked that this tip can oh. apply for all type and brand phone. And then I, be I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm, some more from Mr. Rahmat again. What the means mm -hmm. of Moment Lens? Yeah, is the brand's name actually. Okay. Uh, let me scroll again. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for answering that question. Uh, so, <laughs> so we young. <laughs> Very... Yes. How much time do you usually spend on each animal? Uh, hmm. How much time do I spend? It depends, depends on the subject, depends on the animal. If it's an insect, and usually I would spend a lot more time photographing it because they're less uh, prone to stress. But if you're photographing something like a frog that is very sensitive to light and that you are illuminating it, with an LED panel that can that can uh, cause a bit of stress. So I generally, I generally limit myself as to how long I spend uh, to with the subject. Um, well, it depends on the subject that I'm photographing. If it's a frog, um, the telltale signs would be you know their pupils would start to dilate a, uh, quite a fair bit. So that's when I know that I should uh, wrap up my shooting and. Uh, let the frog be. Okay, uh, I will pick up two last questions. Mm -hmm. So again, from Mr. Rahman, are you sell the photo that you take? I so far have not sold any photos. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is a hobby. I, I take photos as a hobby. I, I do not sell them. Um, but if you are interested in buying one, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, last question. Uh, Hi, Pearl. Have you tried using the macro lens on the iPhone 13 Pro? Ah, that's uh, something that I've seen ads on everywhere on my Instagram. Um, no, I have not. And I do not own an iPhone 13 Pro, unfortunately. It's too expensive. <laughs> sure, expensive. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, as I said, um, you don't need the lettuce phone model to get good images. Um, for many years, I was photographing with my iPhone 6, um, and it served very, me very well. The only sad part about it, uh, I have to upgrade it, is because the battery uh, life was uh, not great anymore, so I had to upgrade my phone. But um, don't, don't get too um, concerned with owning the latest phone models. I'm sure whatever phone you have will work. Um, just play around with the experiment with different camera apps. Um, practice, keep practicing. It took me a while to get to get to where I am, and I'm sure if with practice you can do too. Okay, thank you all for those fantastic questions, and thank you once again to Miss Pearl E for your thought. You certainly have inspired me as a young person. So I tend to go hiking every week nowadays. So sometimes I take photo of the mushroom, ke, semut. And people call me like the auntie-auntie shot, but I don't care. I like it. So it's encouraging to know that we can do something to challenge mobile photography. 
So I hope those listening leave this session with more insight and hope. So before uh, we wrap up our workshop, I would like to introduce Eco Eco. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, Ms. Pearl also mentioned her husband. So uh, her husband has a, actually a fantastic photo that has been featured in Eco Eco Gallery. So for those who doesn't know, Eco Eco is a photography and resource website which aim to shine and spotlight some of the amazing species that call this part of the world home. So this collaboration between Jan Godel Institute and Root and Shoot Group of Australia, India, Taiwan, Singapore, and Malaysia pulls together resources to give a voice and a platform to our unique wildlife and natural landscape. The Asia Pacific region is one of the most important biodiverse region of the world, and yet, so little is known about the life that is found here. So visit ecoeco.org or give a like on the Facebook page today to find out more about our biodiversity as well as what can you do to protect it. Okay, thank you all for participating in this session. And I'm also on behalf of the RCRC, like to thank you everyone who worked together to make this happen, especially Ms. Pearl E for her time and expertise and Yayasan Samdabi for their support and funding. So don't forget to follow us on media at TRCRC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for all updates. Please do share with us some of the photo that you take after this workshop. We are excited to see you put municipal technique into practice. Thank you all and have a good night.